Hi everyone, so today I'm going to cook bitter leaf soup. Yes, for my family, we'll mix this soup. This is typical Anambra soup, like Igbo people's soup. So, I'm starting with cooking the meat. So today I'm using assorted meat. You can use any kind of meat you have. We mostly use chicken, but somehow we have some chicken bone, especially because of the bone, considering the healthy uh, lifestyle of eating bones. Then um, I have pre-cooked um, gizzard, which I will still add. So now I want to prepare the meat and uh, you know cook it in readiness for the soup. So I wash my meat into the pot. I start, like I said, it's gonna be mixed meat, assorted meat, bitter leaf soups, but I will start cooking um, the beef first because it's harder. And like I said, I had cooked a pre-cooked, um, I use pre-cooked gizzard. I'm gonna add um, onions that I chop, add some salt. You just spice it the way you like your meat. So I'm cooking it, you know, my mother's way. <laughs> and I'm going to cook only this for five minutes without water before I add some water to it. So this has cooked for like five minutes without water. So, I will stir. Now I'm doing five minutes and without pressure because even I'm using pressure for but without the pressure. And that's because this is meat here. I don't know what they do to it, but usually it's softer than the meat I you buy way back home. So if you're cooking at from you know other places outside the western world, maybe you cook for more than five minutes. So, but with this, I will then add um, my chicken. With the chicken, I want to add a little more salt just so that uh, it will be enough to spice. Then I stir it very well. So, you can see I've not added water, but it has already made some its own water from the meat itself if you want it to be real nice you know taste good don't start with what with adding water to your meat allow it to cook a bit generate its own water then if you then need more water depending on how much um, you know meat sauce you want if you don't need so much of the meat sauce then you don't need so much more water so it's up to you to decide so having stirred it like this i'll cook again for another five minutes before i add water. while i'm cooking i'll be preparing other things i need for the soup like washing the vegetable the bitter leaf and so on now i'm gonna add water I'll cook for another five minutes. Now I'm going to add water. Um, test it. And see, you add just what you need, um, depending on how much of the meat sauce you want. So usually, just this is more than enough for me. Then I'll cook for another 10 minutes and the meat will be ready. Remember I talked about pre-cooking the gizzard, so I'll add it at this point just to warm it up some more. If I had not cooked it, I would have added it before the chicken. Just so that all the protein will cook at the same time. So I need to prep the bitter leaf. This is my bitter leaf. It's just like this when you buy it, then I'll wash it. Some people will cook it, but I prefer not to cook, I'll wash it with my hand instead of cooking it so that it can still be fresh in the pot. So, you add water, and start washing it just the way you wash food. <laughs> you know, if 
if you had washed bitch I leave growing up. Say amen. <laughs> so with joy in my heart. I'm washing the vitali. I can wash it for as long as I'm comfortable and until I'm you know convinced that it's no longer bitter. I can also decide to wash, you know, remove some of the water. You know, over time, change water, add new water, you know what I mean? You know this. For those of us who are village girls, we all did this. <laughs> so you wash over time. And uh, yeah, until you have it to your taste. Then you're ready to cook. You wash change water for as many times as you want until your bitter leaf is no longer bitter. Then you're ready to cook it. So you see what I did here? I'm removing the water I have to wash it for a second time. Put back. Put some fresh uh, water. And I keep washing. Until my bitter leaf is good enough for eating. Most times you know when the water is clear. When you keep washing, the water will be changing color. It won't be deep green anymore. Then you will know that your bitter leaf is ready for the pot. water is no longer as green at this point I believe the water is washed so what I do is I wash consecutive 10-15 minutes per washing and I do it three times I wash change water I wash change water and then finally I am ready you know, I do it three times over time your experience will tell you when best, you know, how long you will wash or not wash. Okay, for the last, the bottom, you know, layer of my work, I like to do this a lot, just to make sure that I don't have sand in the different yeah. So like I said, you can see my water is very clear. And I mean, the Italian will be really good. So, I have my bitter leaf ready. You see how long? Very nice. You know, I'm going to do my hair. Oh, you know, go do my hair. My hair is not a pie hair. Very nice. Okay, this is ready. Now, I want to prepare my dry fish. This is out of Mangala. Oh, beautiful. Until you know yourself, you know how you package this beautiful fish for me. So I'm gonna prepare it now. Um, all I need to do is wash it with clean water. warm water to wash though. So with warm water you should be able to remove the sand and any other dirt. If you suspect the fish is really wrongly handled in packaging you can add salt. Salt will make the sand and most of the dirt to settle down and then you'll be able to have your fish in you know for your cooking so i soak it for a few minutes um since it's just um, mildly warm i soak it for a few minutes some people will use very hot water to wash but i want to preserve uh, the nutrients in the fish so i soak it for a few minutes and then i wash it out 
So, I wash the fish, you know, very well with my hands. And then, I do this because I need to remove the bones. I don't cook with the bone at all. I make sure I remove all the bones. I bring down the real fish. Sometimes they're so dry. But, uh, breaking it needs some technique. But yeah, you have to do that. You make sure you deform them. You remove all the bones, avoid um, bone swallowing accident. Make sure I do that very well. So I don't cook soup without deboning. Some people may not want um, the skin, but I don't remove all the skin. I remove them in that jelly. Remember they are smoked dry fish, well dried. Each time I talk about this food, fish, I bless someone. <laughs> the auntie who organizes it for me, may God bless you always. Thank you so much. Yeah, and um, this is the last of the fish. So you make, just use what you have as your own ingredient, but you know, typically we put dry fish in our soup. yeah so my fish is ready so i'm ready to cook <laughs> i first of all put just enough water for the quantity of bitter leaf i want to cook so by my estimate this should be like two or three liters of water and i'm cooking um about 160 gram of bitter leaf really enough to serve my family so i'll cook it and i can start off adding some of my ingredients that i want to really you know soak in well into the food so the first thing i'll add is um one cup of my tikna um guys this is kokoyam tikna and i will just spread it all over here remember one gram will serve me for this quantity of soup that i'm cooking for my family i will stir it kokoyam seem to be one of the best for bitter leaf um, but people also use what they call archi and um, those of us from anambra are not so used to archi but yeah some people use archi some can even use um, coca oats. They blend it, finely blend, and use it as thickener. So I have my thickener, one cup. Then I have this. This is uh, another cup of crayfish. I have my crayfish already blended in and nicely stored in my freezer. So it's easy for me to just measure out what I want. But some people will have it raw and then they will pound it before they cook. Another thing I, I try to add early is some of the spices. So this is just one of them. This is not cute. I have two of it. Two, two by two, that means four. Then um, I'll add pepper my red pepper i use one full spoon of my pepper and then i use another full spoon of the black pepper all of them has unique taste you know the way it, it makes it taste so so i'm still cooking and then at this point I'm going to add my oil. I like to shake it just so that I don't take only the top of the oil. 
now this is vitaline usually i use very light oil in my soup or food but this is vitaline so i use a full spoon full spoon of it so the quantity of oil you add will depend on how you and your family eat oil with this i'll cover the pot and bring it to boil yes it's boiled now so i'm going to add one very important ingredient which if you don't add then you didn't cook bitterly and that is ogili hmm? ogili ibu it's made from castor oil so i will add i usually will add about two tablespoons to this quantity i preserve it in my freezer i bring it from home and i preserve it. they also sell it in african stock okay. now with ogili ibu added i can now begin to add every other thing and keep cooking you can see you make it as thick as you want it and it's up to you in fact all the ingredients you add will just be as you want it so one of the only things i will also add is um, the meat broth so you can see the quantity of water you add will also um you remember you have the meat broth so you put that in mind when you're adding your water so i start with my my bones so that i can cook some more into my pot yeah my husband loves those bones and then i also will add the beef and the gizzard my chicken will be among the last thing to add at this point you can just uh, empty the, the meat pot so i had earlier removed my chicken because i'll add it last so that it won't scatter in the pot you know how to get this i will also add the dry fish and I'll just add all of it into my pot so your thickener will just add what will thicken your soup based on your taste and um, yeah you'll be good at this point i've not also added salt salt will be my last because there is salt in the dry fish there is salt and you know all the other spices in the meat so i won't add salt until i know that these other ingredients and the salt they contain is not too much then i'll just add enough i will allow it to cook again for maybe 10 minutes and this has cooked enough but you see i'm careful so that it won't splash into my eyes when i'm opening it so i open it carefully you know so i have the cover just this is a protective measure so hmm my soup is almost ready and with this i'm going to add my vitamin i'm going to tell you about something when i add the bitter leaf. so this is my bitter leaf now like i said this is 160 grams it's two pack of bitter leaf just the usual pack you find in african stores i'll add them all guys i hope you're watching this carefully you can see i'm not staring it and I will tell you what my mother taught me about this shortly. It has proven to work actually. So 
When I finish, I'm not going to stir it. I'll cover it. Allow it to sink down by itself. My mom said, and I've tried it many times, it looks like it's working. I don't know the science behind it. <laughs> but she said, when you stir it immediately, it will leave more bitter taste than you want. So I put it this way, allow it to boil before I will then, you know, come and stay. In that way, the bitter leaf soup will come out perfect. Like the type of savano doguma. You know what I mean? Yeah. So this is it now. So after cooking for like five to seven minutes, I'll come back. You can see. Yeah. The leaves has gone down by itself. In this way, this soup will not be bitter, it will just be perfect for my chief and my lovely children. Hmm. Remember, I've not added chicken because I didn't want the chicken to scatter in my pot. You know how chicken is, so I'm gonna add chicken now. The chicken is fully cooked. Just add it because we like chicken. We cook with chicken mostly. I'll just add very little more salt. I think not much. So we're not. We're also not heavy on salt as a family. So in this way. We cook for a few more minutes and the soup is ready to be served. This is bitter leaf with a sorted mix. So this is the final product which we will eat with fufu. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel. I look forward to seeing you in my next video. If you try it, share your experience, put your comment in my comment box. In fact, one of my husband's colleagues told us that this is what he uses whenever he feels signs of malaria. So, literally you can cure malaria. <laughs> anyway, enjoy yourself.